Hello everyone. So I'd like to share with you some possible items or problems that might occur during a licensure examination for teachers, especially along um, general mathematics um, course. So I prepared 10 items um, that we tr will try to analyze and further comprehend in order for you to at least apply it later on when you will take also your licensure examination. So let's consider your first problem. You were asked to find the greatest common factor of 180 and 220. But of course, before we get the, the, the greatest common factor of 180 and 220, the first thing that we need to do is to understand, to review or recall the, the, the idea about greatest common factor. So when we say greatest common factor, this is actually a number that a common number which is considered to be the largest factor of the two given numbers so considering the factors of 180 and 220 look into their common greatest factor so that will serve as the the value of the the problem or that will serve as the answer of the problem but before we find the the greatest common factor of 180 and 220, let's try to look into a very important process that it may help you find the value of this problem. So, and this is what they call the prime factorization process. Uh, so what is this prime factorization process? It is, it, it is actually a process of looking prime factors of numbers. What are possible prime factors of numbers? So, so that if you multiply these numbers, it will give you a product of the which is that number itself. So, what are prime numbers? These are actually numbers having a factor of one in itself. Okay. So, in order for you to find the greatest common factor of this one hundred eighty and two hundred twenty, you need the process of prime prime factorization as shown in the the presentation. So if we will look into the prime factors or possible prime factors of 180, it will give you 2 times 2, 5, 3, okay? And if you are going to look into the <clears throat> prime factors of 220, it will be 2, 2, 5, and 11. Now take note, we are looking into the common factor, which is considered to be the largest factor uh, that that we can find to both 182 and, and 220 so what we are going to do here considering the prime factors that we have found out we try to look also the common prime factors of the two given numbers so as you can see um there are there were actually three prime factors okay that are in common to this 180 and 220. So in this particular case, just multiply the common three prime factors, it and it will give you a value of 20. And then what is now the meaning of 20? In this particular case, we can now say that 20 is considered to be the greatest common factor of 180 and 220. Okay, so you know, we found it through the process of prime factorization. All right, so let's proceed to um, problem number two. In 1993, for every woman arrested in the United States, four men were arrested. What is the ratio of the number of men arrested to the number of women arrested? Okay, so the idea here is all about ratio. This is actually an application of a ratio, okay? So when we say ratio, if we try to recall, it is actually the comparison or, yeah, it is actually the, the, the comparison of two quantities, okay? And, and we can denote ratio as A to B or A is to B or A over B, where A and B are both um, numbers, okay? But take note that B should not be equal to zero. So in, in that particular problem or in that particular situation, 
it says every woman arrested equals four men so what will be the ratio of men arrested to the number of women take note that one woman is to four men but the problem is men is to women so therefore in that particular case we know that there are there were four men and there is only one woman so we can say that the ratio of the number of men arrested to the number of women arrested is equal to four is to one okay so the answer here is letter b let's try number three if the ratio of teachers to students in a school um is one to 18 and there are 360 students how many teachers are there so this is now an example of a proportion problem okay now take note that when we say proportion this is actually the equality of two ratios you should have two given ratios that are considered to be equivalent or equal now of course we need to apply a rule here in order for us to apply or to solve problems involving proportions and the rule says the product of the means equals the product of the extremes because in a ratio we can denote it as 1 is to 18 that is equal to x is to 360. How, how did we come up with this with this given proportion now if you consider the given item the ratio of teachers to students in school is 1 to 18 so we can derive a ratio here and that is 1 is to 18 one represent that is the one represents the teacher while the 18 represents the number of students now if there were 360 students how many teachers are there so we will be having another ratio here or establishing another ratio here and that is equal to x over 360 degrees following the the position that we've presented a while back in the first ratio so x represents the teacher number of teachers while one or 360 represents the number of students so we try to equate the two so that we'll be having a proportion so, so computing the value of your x now which is which represents the number of teachers <clears throat> having 360 number of students will be equal now to 20 so the result is if the ratio is 1 is to 18 and there were 360 students then the number of teachers will be equal to 20 so in that particular case we can say that 1 is to 18 is just the same to 20 is to 360 Okay, so in this item number four, this is actually an application of percentage. Now take note that when we are computing for percentage, we always remember or recall the formula, the general formula of a percentage, and that is equal to rate multiplied by the base. That is the value of the percentage. Now take note that when we say percentage this is not actually the 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 number in percent symbol but this is the value of the percent this is value of the rate because the the, the number in percent symbol is actually the rate okay so if we try to answer number four and it says what is the 45 percent of 50 so meaning we are getting the 45 percent of 50 so in this particular case we know that the rate is equal to 45 percent and we are taking 45 percent to that 50 and in that particular case we can say that 50 will be considered as the base now meron tayong isang idea dito that we may utilize that we may consider in order to solve this problem now take note that the word of okay means multiplication operation so in in this particular case it's just like um it is telling that we are multiplying 45 percent to 50 so that we can be able to find or to answer the problem but before we solve it you need to to um translate this um or change it on 45 percent 
into a decimal into its equivalent decimal form and that is equal to 0.45 so what is 0.45 of 50 that will be equal to 22.5 okay it's by simply multiplying them so the answer here is 22.5 the fifth item is what percent of or 80 is what percent of 240 now how do we answer this one 80 is what percent of 240 so in this particular case we are actually getting the value of the rate because we are looking for the percent value okay 80 represents the percentage while 240 represents the base so manipulating our original formula which is percentage is equal to rate multiplied by the base since we are looking for the value of the rate we will cross multiply or divide both sides um, by the value of the base so that the, the formula will become rate is equal to percentage over the base but or since we are looking for the value of the percent it should be multiplied by 100 for it to be converted into a percent value okay so we know that the percentage is 80, while well, the base is equal to 240 multiplied by 100. That will give you um, a rate of 30%. So it means that 80 is the 30% of 240. So item number five, the answer here is letter B. Let's consider number six. If A and B are integers and the sum of A and B, the sum of A times B and B is odd, which of the following could be true? I. A and B are both odd. A is even and B is odd. A is odd and B is even. So in order for you to answer this problem, such problem is just like doing you need to, to just do verification, okay? Verifi verifying the, the choices since we know that in, in the license or examination for teacher, they often give or they always give multiple choice type of exam. So, ang gagawin lang natin dito is to verify the choices. Sino sa kanila or alin sa kanila ang mag-hold dito sa tatlong scenarios na ito, Okay? Sabi dito, the sum of the product of A and B and the B should be odd. We know odd numbers are um, numbers having factors not multiple of 2. Okay, So an example of an odd number is 1, T, um, 5, 7, 9, and so on. So these are odd numbers. So kailan kaya tayo magkakaroon ng isang odd number? Pwede ba kapag both of your A and B are odd? You try to verify by setting example where A is even and B is odd. Or A is odd and B is even. So in this particular case, after verifying it through by setting an example or by setting numbers, corresponding numbers to this A and B, it will be A is even and B is odd. Okay? So considering A to be equal to 2 and B to be equal to 1, so if we multiply 2 and 1, that represents AB or A times B, that is equal to 2. You sum up it with um 1, that will be equal to 3. Okay? So 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, which is an odd. So in this particular case, number 2, or two eyes is the answer. So therefore, letter B is the answer for this item. Now, um, considering this problem, it is an application of inverse proportion. So when we say inverse proportion, we are looking for the inverse of an original um, proportion. Meron tayong original dito, but the, 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 the thing that we need to consider here is to look into its corresponding inverse. So the problem is how do we know or how can we come up with an inverse of an original proportion? First, you need to come up with a normal proportion that, that may serve as your original proportion. Then take the inverse or reciprocal of one of the ratios 
in the proportion and find the unknown. Okay? So, yun yung magiging process natin in order for us to look into its inverse proportion. So, considering this item, it takes 40 men to build the Karina Bridge for five full years. How many men will be needed to build it in just two years? So, if you will be solving this problem, applying an original or a normal proportion, the answer will be illogical or impractical. Why? Because the result will give you a lesser number of um, men who will build the Kirino Bridge in just two years. Okay? Since we know that 40 men ang kailangan para, makapag, para ma makonstruct yung, yung Kirino Bridge for five full years. Pero, syempre, since the problem is they will only construct it in two years, so dapat mas marami. Da da dapat na tao ang magtatrabaho dito. So, therefore, it, um, anong magiging logic dyan? Mas marami dapat ang tao na kailangan to build the Kirino Bridge in just two years. But if we will be using an original or a normal proportion to answer the problem, try to observe na liliit yung magiging value ng number of men when they will construct the Kirino Bridge. So that will be very um, impractical. Di ba? Hindi siya or it will be a wrong decision or wrong answer kasi kailangan mas marami. Di ba? Mas marami magtratrabaho kasi binibilisan nila yung pagtratrabaho kasi they are only to construct it in just two years. So they will be, we need actually to apply the inverse proportion for this particular case. Now, so considering the process of looking into the inverse of a particular proportion, we need to come up first with an original proportion. So the original proportion that may be derived in this given situation is 40 men is to X men that is equal to 5 years over 2 years. Okay. Um, take the inverse or reciprocal of one ratios, one of the ratios in the proportion. Let's say yung pangalawang ratio ang tinake ko yung kanyang reciprocal naging 2 over 5. Kanina dun sa original naging 5 over 2. Okay? So that will now be our um, stepping stone in order for us to solve for the problem. So considering now the inverse of that original proportion, we will try to find the value of x. Try to, uh, find to, uh, we will try to find the number of men that will be needed to build the Arena Bridge in just two years. So applying cross-multiplication process, we will come up with 200 that is equal to 2x. But we are looking for the value of x, so we need to multiply one half to both sides so that it will lead you to a value of 100. Okay, men. So in this particular case, it says that um, in order for us to build the Carino Bridge in just two years, we need this 100 men. So this is item number seven. The answer here is 100. Okay, for item number eight, this is actually um, a problem involving partitive proportion. Iba naman itong idea ng partitive proportion na ito. Okay. So when we say partitive proportion, it's just like we are looking into the values or subdivisions. Okay, we are looking into the subdivisions, subparts of a whole. Okay, so let's consider item number eight. A stick is cut into four pieces in the ratio um, one is to two is to three is to four. Find the length of the stick of the longest piece. If the longest piece is also 150 centimeter. Okay. So we know that the longest piece here is 150 centimeters. The problem is we are looking for the length of the stick. But this stick was cut into four pieces. Okay. Into four parts. Iba iba yung, yung lengths. Okay, ng mga parts na yan. Kasi yung ratio natin is 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. In this particular case, 1 is actually the shortest among the 4 cuts. While 4 is the longest among the cuts. So 4 represents 150 in this case. 
So, of course, in order for you to apply this idea, quantitative proportion, we utilize a general formula and that will give you the proportion of the total is equal to the total multiplied or divided by sum of ratios multiplied by the equivalent ratio of the portion you are finding. Now, we know that 4 represents 150, which is the longest side or longest piece. Um, 150 is the longest piece. It, the, the sum of the ratios is equal to um, n because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 10. And we are looking for the total length of the stick. Okay. So applying now the formula, we have 150 centimeters equal to x over 10 multiplied by 4. Simplifying further, we have 150 multiplied by 10 that is equal to 4x. Multiplying both sides by 1 fourth the four, so that 4 will be eliminated on the, on the right side, we will be having the value of x to be 875 centimeters. So therefore, in this particular case, the length of the stick that was divided into four parts is equal to 375 centimeters. <clears throat> okay, so considering item number nine, this refers to percentage-related problem. We apply still the definition of percentage or the formula of the percentage, but before we do it, let's try to read first the problem. How much is three-fourth of two-third of 900 pesos? So if we try to recall yung sinabi ko kanina, that the word of represents multiplication operation. So ang gagawin lang natin dyan, actually, is to multiply the three values. T4 multiplied by 2 over 3 multiplied by 900. And we will be getting 450 as the result. So what does 450 means? 450 is actually the 3 fourth of the 2 third of 900 pesos. And for last number, this is an application of a linear equation, specifically an age-related problem. So let's try to read the problem. Mother is four times as old as Mary. Five years ago, she was seven times as old. How old is each? A. Mary is five while her mother is 20. Mary is seven while her mother is 28. Mary is nine while her mother is 36. Or Mary is 10 while her mother is 40. In order for us to answer this problem, we try to plot first the given. So we let um, x to be the age of Mary. Okay. And of course, kasi sabi dun sa first statement or first sentence is mother is four times as old as Mary. So ang ibig sabihin, 4x ang ating age, ang age ni mother, while yung x represents the age of Mary. Okay. Five years ago, their ages will be just to subtract h by five. So for the for Mary's age, it will be x minus five, and mother's age it will be four x minus five. So based on the item, Mary was seven times as old five years ago. Hence, we multiply seven to the age of Mary five years ago. So magiging seven times x minus five. Okay. So derive uh, in order for us to answer now the problem, we need to derive the equation considering the given itong mga idea dito sa right part. So in this particular case, we can say that the age of the mother is just e uh, five years ago is just equal to the seven multiplied by x minus five, or um, simply we have four x minus five that is equal to seven times x minus five. So, computing now the value of x that will serve as the value or, or the age of Mary, considering the, the age of mother, will be utilizing 4x. Okay, so the value of x here, considering the derived equation, is equal to 10, and that represents Mary's age. Just multiply by 4, that will be the age of her mother. So, this item, I repeat, is an application of age-related problem in linear equation. Okay? So I hope marami kayong natutunan. 
um, please wait for further videos, um, continuation videos of my review for general education course for the licensure examination for teachers. Have a good day and good luck, everyone. Bye.